Welcome to the Jumpstart Cloud Guard Deployment Lab. In your previous exercise, we deployed an Azure virtual network with two subnets. That was done in preparation to set up a Cloud Guard gateway. In this second exercise, we're going to deploy a checkpoint management station. The management station could be deployed in various locations at the customer premise, in another VPC, or another cloud environment. But to show you the scope of CloudGuard, we're going to deploy the management station also in this Azure cloud within the same VNet. We're going to place the management station in a front-end subnet. Let me show you how to deploy it in the front-end subnet of your VPC. Let's get started. Again, connect to your Azure account. There are a few ways to deploy it. Go to the home menu and select create a resource. In the marketplace, you can search for the product that you want. In this case, we are going to type cloud guard. Then we hit the enter key to search through the marketplace. We find two products with that name. The search results shows us the cloud guard network security, firewall and turret prevention product. Let's select this product. If this is your first time installing this product, I suggest you spend a few moments to review it. You can read a little bit about this product if you like, regarding some of the benefits, deployment plans, and also some of the support information. I covered most of this already in the previous video, but it might be a nice refresher. Now let's take a look at the plans that you can deploy. Select the pull down menu. Checkpoint offers five different deployment plans. They can be grouped into two categories. We have the management station and the gateway. In the management station, we have two kinds of deployments. We have the standard single checkpoint security management, and we also have the Cloud Guard multi-domain server, which are for large enterprises. In the gateway category, we have the single gateway and also a cluster high availability solution that offers resiliency and redundancy. And third, and finally, we offer the Cloud Guard scale set solution, which is for dynamic and scalable platform solutions that can scale up and down as your business demands, needs increase and decrease. In this exercise, we will install the checkpoint security management. So make sure you select it and then hit create. We now need to fill the fields as follows. The subscription stays the same. The resource group has to be a new one, one that does not have any resources attached to it. Notice the error when I select the first one. That's because we already used that in the first exercise. It has already been assigned to my VNet and the subnets. So let's select the second one in my case. But in your case, if your accounts and subscription permissions are different, you might need to create a new one. We will keep the region the same, East US. You can select your region, the same region that you selected in the first exercise. Now we need to give this a server name. I will call mine CPMNG which is short for Checkpoint Management Server. Now we need to define a password. This is the Gaia Smart Console Login Password. There are special security requirements that your password must meet. The password must not include reserved words or unsupported characters. The password must be minimum of 12 characters or longer. And the password must contain three of the following either one lowercase character, one uppercase character, one number, or a special character. The more complex, the better. But obviously, it should be something that you will be able to remember and you will need to retype it a few times, every time when logging into the management station. You need to confirm your password. This is a nice sanity check. All software do this now. Select Next to change the Checkpoint Security Management Server Settings. 
we're going to make a few modifications from the default. Let's select R80.40 version. For the license, we will select the pay as you go license. It will give us a 30 day EVO license and it is also the cheaper one to test with. The virtual machine size, we will keep the defaults. There is no need to change it. And also it has been optimized to work with CloudGuard. The installation type is management station. Allowed clients, we will leave it as is for now. But it would be best to lock this down to your GUI clients, network or IP address. The rest will keep the defaults. And now let's hit next for network settings. We are going to place this CloudGuard management station. We're going to select the VPC that we created in exercise one, my VNet. And we are going to attach it to the front end subnet that we created in exercise one. Select next to review and create. The Azure software will verify that all your changes are fine. If we forgot anything, we would get an error and be prompted to fix any discrepancies. Okay, we got validation passed. This is our green light to continue. Let's select create. The Azure software will now deploy our new CloudGuard management station in my account, within my subscription, in the US region, in my VNet virtual network, and will attach it to the front end subnet. This deployment can take a few minutes. I am going to fast forward to the completion. Notice some of the resources that it is creating. Notice that we never added an IP address. It's going to use the first IP address in the front end subnet. Now the deployment is completed, at least from the Azure interface perspective, but in the background, it is still installing and configuring the Gaia and Checkpoint software. Let's select go to resource. I am looking for the IP address. We need to select the resource of CP management virtual machine. Let's click on it. In the overview page, notice that there is two IP addresses, a private IP address and a public IP address. Notice that it added a public IP address. The public IP is the routable IP. Microsoft Azure gives it to you when you deploy the resources in their cloud. So your virtual machines resources will be accessible from the internet. Let's select copy IP address. And now let's open a browser and connect to the public IP address, HTTPS colon whack whack 1382.196.207 or whatever IP address that has been provided to you. Hit enter. We get the standard certificate cannot be verified, which is normal because it's a self-signed certificate. Select proceed to continue. Great, we get the Gaia browser login page. We need to provide the username and password. This is the password that we created before in the deployment step. Select the logon icon. Notice we got a message that the system is still being configured. Please try again later. We have to wait a few more minutes. Even though we have deployed the management on Azure Cloud, the operating system is still being hardened and the checkpoint software is being configured. This is the longest time to wait, but we can take a look at the Azure console to see what is going on. Scroll to the serial console, which is a new feature in Azure. It takes a few moments to connect. You can see that it's still booting. Let's time lapse this forward. Still not ready. 
eight minutes later, there we go, we have the Gaia portal access. The management station is now fully loaded. From here, we can download the Smart Console, select Download Now. Let's quickly take a look at a few things while we are here. Let's go to the Network Interface tab. Notice that even though we never entered an IP address during the deployment, two IP addresses have been configured. There is a private IP address, 10.0.0.4, on ETH0. This is the first IP address in the front end subnet. That we gave it a range of 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Remember, our VPC was a slash 16. So the slash 24 was a subnet range for the front end. So it selected the first available IP in a slash 24 range. Dot zero is reserved for the network, which is the same in traditional networks. Dot one is reserved for the gateway. The gateway is implied in Microsoft Azure. You don't need to create it. It automatically, implicitly gets created for you. Dot two and dot three are also reserved for the Azure fabric. So dot four is the first available IP. 10.0.0.4 is the checkpoint management station IP. Notice that it also created an alias on ETH0 colon one with the public IP address. This is the IP that we're using in the browser. Now let's take a look at the static routes. Notice the default route. In Microsoft Azure, you don't explicitly create the default gateway. It is implicitly created for you when you define a subnet. In this case, the front end subnet. 10.0.0.1, this is the first IP in our slash 24 front end subnet range. Even though we never created an explicit gateway with this IP address, all routing will be sent to this gateway IP which sits within the Azure fabric and all routing will be done by and through the Azure fabric. The other two routes were created by the Azure and they will be used by the Azure software and are not relevant to us now. Now let's open a putty session to the management station. I need to run some commands and also show you the status. Again, we need to log in with our admin username and password. All right, we're in. Two things. First, we are going to enable CloudGuard with the command CloudGuard on. You need to run this command to make sure it is a CloudGuard management station or else it is just a standard management station. I will show you that in a moment. CloudGuard IAAS is successfully enabled. CloudGuard IAAS is the code name for CloudGuard Network Security and Threat Prevention Product. The second command that I'm going to run is just to show you what the first command did. CPWD underscore admin space list shows us the checkpoint processes that are running. The command CloudGuard on has started the CloudGuard process, which is the controller process. So this VM is a management station, but it's also a controller, which will make adaptive security easy, as explained before in the explanation video. Smart console has finished downloading, you can now start the installation of Smart Console. For time constraints, I will skip the installation details in this video. I assume you have done it before. If not, just accept all the default settings. Once Smart Console is installed, let's launch it and now we need to log in. 
Again, we provide the username and password, and also the IP address of the management station. Select Proceed to accept the fingerprint. Connecting, initializing, launching, almost there. We have liftoff. Now you can browse through the console to get a feel for it. If this is the first time viewing R80.40, I will let you explore it on your own. Before ending this video, let's just recap what we did in this lab. In exercise 2, we deployed a CloudGuard management station. We deployed the management station in our Azure virtual network called MyVNet. We attach the management station directly to the front end subnet 10.0.0.0/24. The Azure software assigned an IP address of 10.0.0.4/24, which is the first IP address in the front end subnet range. The Azure software also assigned us a public IP address, which will be routable from the internet. In my case, it assigned it an IP of 13.82.196.207. The Azure software also deployed an implied gateway of 10.0.0.1. This is the default gateway for my VNet virtual network. After installing the management station, we turn on the controller process with the command CloudGuard on. We also downloaded and installed the Smart Console client on my office PC. After the management station was fully installed, we then connected through Smart Console from the office to the Azure Cloud. This now concludes the end of exercise two. In the next exercise, we're going to deploy the CloudGuard Gateway. I'll see you there.